Hello, and welcome to Talk From Superheroes. Hey, everybody, I'm Andrew Rodney. And I'm Diana McCullum. And you're listening to Talk From Superheroes, where every week we discuss a piece of superhero television or film. Uh, and this week, we are talking about Godzilla versus Kong. Godzilla, yes, those are the order of the names. I, I have to constantly check. I don't know how their agents worked out who got top billing. Godzilla's got and top billing. Godzilla's got top. Got that good agent. He's got that good agent. Well, he's got two movies. Kong only that got is, one. That is true. That so is he's, true. He's coming he's the in franchise. hot. He's the franchise. He's, he's the, the franchise. opener. He's yes. the Iron Man mm-hmm, of mm-hmm. the of the whole universe. Right. Extra movies, top billing in the verses. Mm-hmm. So yes, Godzilla versus Kong, the brand new monster mayhem, monster mashy, fun time movie. I think MonsterVerse is what they're calling it. MonsterVerse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, if he was the creator, they would call it the Zillaverse, I think, if he really w- earned that top billing. Like, the CW shows are the Arrowverse. Because he was the first. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Maybe the Bur- Berlantiverse, if you're nasty. But like, if you're nasty. But the MCU isn't called mm-hmm. the Iron Man-verse. No, so. it's it's not, because they know that, like, everything's got a little heat there. But this is a, like, like Godzilla put this on his back and carried this straight into theaters, you know That's what I mean? That's fair. And I think I read, mentioned last week, I constantly think the MonsterVerse is the Dark Pictures the, the universe DC, that was going to happen. Dark uni- universal Dark Pictures. Yeah, yeah. that they were going to do and then never did. They only mm-hmm. made the mummy. Yeah. Um, and I constantly think that's the MonsterVerse. Right. Uh, so I'm always wrong. God, but remember is... that Entertainment Weekly cover? <laughs> A-list stars who are all gonna star the, in one of these movies. For the movies? Universal Monster movies? Where there was like, like Jekyll and Hyde, Invisible Man. It was Russell Crowe as Jekyll and Hyde, and Johnny Depp as the Invisible Man. And then it had Tom Cruise and the girl who played the mummy whose name was Sophia right. or something? Right, something, played yeah. the mummy. And then I feel like there was a fifth one. Wasn't Xavier Bardem doing something? He was. I don't he was. Know. Was he Dracula? I can see him as Dracula. Maybe he was Dracula, but yeah, either way, huge cover. It was this huge like we're we're the next twenty years is going to be <laughs> Universal movies doing this. And I oddly enough built was off like, the back of the Mummy. And oddly enough, I was like, oh, they planned it out. They've got a cast. It's probably going to be great. <laughs> And the mummy was so bad. And they really fucked all that, huh? But wow. that is not the monster. That's not the monster verse. No. This is we. I can't say that I've ever seen the Godzilla versus Kong cover of Entertainment Weekly, where they both have a photo shoot together. And that's see, that's how you do it right. All right, you don't you don't build up the hype. You just you just get there organically. You just find out who people want to see. Fight. Yeah, you don't like a Hobbs versus Shaw kind of. Exactly. You don't call your shots ahead. All right. Don't walk up and point to the point to the back of the fence. Like just point to the outfield. Like just just. Just don't call your shots. Just do it as you see it, you know? Mm. Uh, so we're talking about Godzilla versus Kong this week. Uh, we are going to give you a spoiler-free review here now in a second. Uh, whenever we talk about a new movie or property, we give you a quick spoiler-free review in case you're on the fence about seeing it. Then once you hear the theme song, that's when we're getting into the spoiler-filled section where we talk about the movie with full abandon. Uh, so spoiler warning there. But before we get into the spoiler-filled section, the the spoiler-free review, Diana, did you like it? Uh- particularly like it no no okay no. um i mean the kong versus godzilla parts they're great mm-hmm. they're there's two giant monsters who are fighting they fight well they fight fun it's fun fights and then the rest of the movie is completely boring and lacking charm or logic but not in a not in a bad enough way to make it fun there's not there's not like not enough logic for me to be like oh we're just fucking going bananas huh it's like oh no you're trying to make it make sense mm. and it's just not quite making sense and most of the action isn't quite great when it's not Godzilla versus Kong, and I'm not super interested, and I don't like any of these people, and I don't care about their journeys. So yeah, Godzilla, the title thing that happens, Godzilla versus Kong, great. Rest of the movie, blah, 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 blah. Andrew, did you like it? Uh, I think it's fun, but I think it's wildly stupid. I think this might be... I don't think it's stupid enough. <laughs> okay, I, I see what you're saying, that you don't think it's stupid enough. I think they make some... Some weird swings in this. There's some really the human story is is a mess, and I can forgive the like oh the there's plot holes. It doesn't make sense. I don't think they're really trying to make it make sense. It's dumb as hell, and I'm kind of okay with that. But there's a lot of dumb stuff that's in the way, and the human story is particularly boring, and it it just doesn't work for me. But I do find it fun because. It is the spectacle that I wanted it to be. The action scenes are really fun and entertaining. Kong is a very interesting character, which we'll get into it in the spoiler section, but I feel like the fact that 
this is a monster movie where they gave Kong, the monster, personality and character, made this the one of the franchise that needed human characters the least because it's the only one, it's the first one really where they've given full personality to the creature. So they needed humans the least and it had humans the most. And I do feel like this was kind of made by executives who were like, Millie Bobby Brown's hot. We got to get her, keep her around. Do not let her leave. Find it, something for her to do. It really felt like there was someone at the studio just with a gun pointed at Millie Bobby Brown. who was like, don't go, don't leave us. We need a star. So it, it does feel a little desperate at times with the human stuff. It, but the monster stuff I had a lot of fun with. It looks great. If you have, I think, even a passing interest in Kong or Godzilla, I think it is still worth the watch because you will get both Kong and Godzilla. I think if you find any enjoyment from a kaiju monster movie, you will find the mo moments of pleasure, moments of joy in this. Absolutely. If you already have HBO Max and you got Godzilla vs. Kong for free, throw it on if you've got any interest in, in mega fights and just kind of ignore the human story because there's not... There's not anything to mine there, which I do find interesting because I find I feel like on paper the human story actually works. Like they beat it out like a pretty good human story, and then it just had no resonance or charm mm. or anything to it when you actually like got into the weeds of the directing and, and execution of it. Yeah, they figured out stuff for humans to do, but it just didn't feel like anything. It just didn't work, and it's still very much similar to the problem we talked about last week with 2014's Godzilla. It still feels like a Frankenstein script. It feels like a few too many cooks had their hands in a few too many storylines. Five writers. Five, and, and yeah, I feel like there <laughs> Every are- Every single one of these movies. There are a few different versions of this all stitched together with different writers who are all fighting for different characters to be the lead character. So it's a, a little bit uncertain as to who the lead of this movie is. That's a great point. I'm not sure who the lead of this is. I will, I will when we get into the spoiler section, get into more detail, but I will 100% argue that no version of this script had Millie Bobby Brown in it. And the studio, this is why I joke that like someone with a gun was like, you need to be in this movie, we need a star. Because there is no point to her character returning, mm. and the entire story is focused on literally everyone else, and she is just there to be like, she's hot right now, and we want that hot star power to that that star meter Heath mm. on this film. All right. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, there's stuff like that. Feels a little Frankenstein. He feels, but like, yeah, there is really fun monster stuff. I think there's a. This could be chopped down to a really fun 90 minute movie. Yeah, we were very excited. It wasn't two hours. It's an hour 53. But even saying that, I'm like, it could be 90. It's it's the <laughs> it short. Could easily be 90. It's the shortest of all four of these Zilla verse movies, mm. and it feels like the longest, frankly. I don't know. Two felt pretty long. Two felt a little, but this still feels like the longest mm -hmm. to me. I, th I think that it's not, Kong is the best of these movies. No one's beaten Kong movie-wise. Skull yeah. Island, we just rewatched it, Mwah, chef's kiss. It has, it is, is the best visually, it's the best monster, it's the best storytelling, it's the best human characters. Then I think it's 2014 Godzilla, mm -hmm. where that's some of the best like visual and monster work with a human story that's flat if inoffensive. The Brian Cranston stuff works, at least. Exactly. Yeah, it, that sometimes it works, sometimes it's flat. Then I would rank this movie as like fun monster stuff, some human elements that are a little dumb, and then like the worst of them has been the Godzilla King of the Monsters, where everyone's actively dislikable. I'll agree with this ranking. Mm. Law. A little power Gavel. Rank. Law. Gavel. Gavel it in. Gavel. Law. And can this movie be spoiled for people? Maybe that bit at the end, the final fight, mm. like. May, I wouldn't say it not real. I mean, the title is Godzilla vs. Kong. Right, right. You get what you came for, for the most part. I would say maybe that little bit at the end, but nothing huge. Yeah, yeah, I would I would agree with that. <laughs> two, little, two little tweaks at the end that were kind of surprising, but uh, other than that, it's all a banana storyline where an ape fights a dinosaur. So... It's it's going to be his, bananas. He does his best, you guys. And he does his absolute <laughs> sweethearted best. So yeah, I don't think there's any any huge plot twists and surprises here other than like one or two fun action beats. Hmm, I'll agree. Yeah? Gavel. 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 Law. It's law. It's law that it's fine. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right, so that's a quick spoiler-free review. Before we get into the spoiler-filled section, we just want to give a thank you to our sponsor of today's episode. You know them and love them. It is tpublic.com. Tpublic, you're absolutely amazing. Gavel, law. Law. We love tpublic.com. Law. law. 
<laughs> Do I have a third one? Law. Law. I did. I did have a third beat for the gavel. Uh, yeah, they make indie designs by indie artists on wonderful pieces of clothing, like t-shirts, tank tops, hoodies, whatever you need to wear. And also, don't say this enough, the t-shirts, there's like a v-neck option. I love the v-neck t-shirts. They you are You nice. get different kinds of t-shirts, different materials, different colors. You can customize your shirt so much. Love the v-necks. They're great for if I have a towel on my head because I'm just out of the shower, or if I don't want to ruin my makeup, and I'm like, oh, tight t-shirt, but you got that v ah. to give you a little extra space. I see. On the face. See, I think of you more more as the ringer tee, baseball tee type of person. I like them all. You do like them all. I like them all. They also have ringer all. tees and baseball tees. And I got a lot of the baseball tees. You do got the baseball tees, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and there's just lots of different designs. And if you're not even looking for clothing, any of their cool designs, you can also get it on things like like mugs, wall art, pillow cases, uh, cell phone cases, laptop cases, uh, stickers, so Love you can put it stickers. on anything. Uh, you can get them on masks uh, as well. So there's a lot of good options. And they're all uh, independent artists who designed artwork and are getting a uh, commission for their work. So you're getting something cool and unique that's created by an independent artist. The one that I'm liking this week is called Godzilla versus King Kong, uh, and it is a an old style boxing uh, fight poster in the style of the um, of the Foreman Ali Rumble in the Jungle type of fight. So it's uh, they Godzilla would versus fight in Kong. The jungle. And they would fight in the jungle too. <gasps> And they do, I believe, or no, maybe no, not jungle. Godzilla don't make no trips. Mm. <laughs> Godzilla makes so Godzilla gets around. But this is, uh, yeah, it's a fun, distressed, old timey like boxing poster for Godzilla versus King Kong. It's it's a it's a fun style. I like it. It's a super fun mashup of a thing you wouldn't expect it to mash up with, which I really like. My shirt is I chose my other favorite lizards, who are the Ninja Turtles this week, and it is the '90s Ninja Turtles, and they're all hanging out. And it just says Squad Goals, and they are my Squad Goals. I love the Ninja Turtles. Hmm. Yeah, more more ninjas, less Godzilla. They're a good squad. <laughs> They're a great. If that was my squad, Unstoppable Squad. Unstoppable Squad. Mm -hmm. uh, and real cute shirt. Real cute shirt, real cute designs, and real well-made products, well-priced, ship right to your doorstep. And if you like either of the designs that we just mentioned, you can head over to our storefront, which is at tpublic.fromsuperheroes.com. That is T-E-E, -E, public.fromsuperheroes.com. Dot com. And when you shop through our storefront, not only do you support the independent artist who designed the shirt, but you also directly support this podcast as well. So you support great people. You get great products, well-made, well-priced, right to your doorstep, tpublic.fromsuperheroes.com. And thank you, tpublic, for your support. Thank you so much, tpublic. And now let's get into the spoiler-filled section where we talk about all of the things they do or don't punch. This is the place we put the spoilers, guys. Do they smooch? We'll talk about it now. It's Godzilla vs. Kong. It is Godzilla versus Kong, and boy, I really think Millie Bobby Brown was not in the script of this movie. I think she was, but Her I character, am- Her character, Madison I, Russell, I apparently. do want to hear your reasoning and why you don't think she was here. Think back on this movie- she plays a character, so her character, uh, uh, for, for, the, for the listeners, if you don't remember or don't know, she's returning from Kong, King of the Monsters, <laughs> or Godzilla, King of the Monsters, Godzilla 2, which was the last movie. So she's a returning character from that movie. She's pretty much the only one except her dad, who is only there because she's there. Exactly. Yeah. So her and her dad are the only ones. And throughout these movies, Godzilla, Godzilla, King of the Monsters, Kong, Skull Island, every movie has been a different writer, different writers, Different directors, different cast. Fully different. Ken Watanabe had two movies. Oh, he did have two. But like he's like fifth build in each of the movies. He's not the lead. So completely different everything. They're not trying to build like an MCU universe around these characters. It's mm -hmm. a monster movie. So it's very weird that she is a returning lead character. And when you think back on the movie, if you literally delete every single one of her scenes, it has no impact on the movie whatsoever. She literally never interacts with all of the, le I would say, lead characters. The ones uh, uh, like Alexander Skarsgård and Rebecca Hall, who are journeying to the center of the earth mm -hmm. and traveling with Kong and working with this company. Like, she listens to a podcast in a van, rides on an underground bus alone, spills a Coke can on a machine, 
And then at the end of the movie, they're like standing in the wreckage next to the lead characters who like traveled with Kong on a boat into the center of the earth. They've never met. She literally has like no lines with any characters outside of her little bubble. Mm. And it has no effect on the plot whatsoever. I think those are just additional scenes written in to have her in the movie. I completely disagree. Well, I, uh, I, I, I think she was always here. Okay. Because I think the problem is her story's not nearly as interesting. But I don't think that is a written late kind of idea. Because I think she is the Godzilla POV character. And then all the other people are the Kong POV character. Because she's the one defending Godzilla. She's like, he didn't attack us. He must have had a reason. I'm going to... She's his, like, kind of patriarch in the movie. She's, she's uh, okay. there for him. She's the Godzilla defense. She's she the Godzilla is. stan, and the she rest of them the are the Kong stands. She is the stan, are the Kong stands. They, they okay. never... Because you could equally say those people never meet Millie Bobby Brown, who's having a big adventure with two other people. Right. Like, the two sides never mingle whatsoever. And I do think she's Godzilla's side and their Kong side as a way to make Godzilla mm. in the movie a little more, even though he's not in it. At least Godzilla's proxy is here, which is Millie Bobby Brown. Right. Um, and I think Godzilla's story is just way more boring, and they didn't have enough for her to do. But I do think she was in this entire movie. Because without okay. her, you never sneak into Mecha Apex and see Mecha Godzilla. You just, you've lost like 30 minutes of screen time if she's not in it. It's not like her scenes are short. I agree you lose 30 minutes of screen time. But then I, it would just be an hour and a half movie. <laughs> and I think that's that's perfect because I, I see what you're saying. That's actually a great point that I hadn't thought of before, that she is the Godzilla POV. POV. Mm -hmm. That's a, a really good perspective and 100% accurate, and I completely missed that. You fucking nailed it. Thank you. Uh, you, are, you are welcome. But that said, she still has no effect on the plot whatsoever, like the other lead characters, the the Kong stands mm -hmm. uh, is uh, Nathan played by Alexander Skarsgård and uh, um, Eileen played by Rebecca Hall. Mm -hmm. If they're deleted from this movie, if those characters cease to exist, no inciting incident happens. Kong is not removed from Skull Island. He is not shipped to the Arctic. He is not sent to the center of the Earth to find the source of an ancient power, to get an ancient weapon, to anger Godzilla, to start these. There, there is no, it is just day-to-day -day life on planet Earth if these characters do not exist. But Madison, Millie Bobby Brown's character, has no impact. It does not move the needle at all on the plot or, incit or incidents or events of this film whatsoever. That I absolutely agree with. You can't remove the Kong people, but you could remove Madison, but I don't think that means she wasn't here at the beginning. I think it means mm. they just had nothing for her to do. Like, Fair. what can a little girl do? Like, she's not a scientist. She can't talk to Godzilla. For some reason, she doesn't even have her little box that can control them like she had in the last movie, yeah. <laughs> which would give her something to do. Absolutely. <laughs> Why didn't we really look into the box technology? There are plenty of ways to give her agency yeah. in this movie. Yeah, um, or like she could have controlled the robot at the end or something mm. like she was in the place with the giant robot they put her in the places she should be and she found out interesting information they just gave her nothing to do with that information like yeah. she didn't call her dad early to get the army to come fight the robot or take it out or she didn't control the robot like they they didn't come up with enough for her to do but i think she was supposed to be in the whole movie and they were just like way more interested in kong they were like mm. skull island's better all the people in that movie would be too old to be in this one so there is no proxy which is a real shame they did keep like i did like that the little girl was like one of the native inhabitants of Sk of kong's island yeah i did which like which made that. a lot of sense it wasn't just like a girl they brought in who who uh, bonded with Kong. Yeah, and having like sign language to introduce language to Kong and that. I think that that was I think that was brilliant. I, I love that, that storyline. I think that was so great and cuz they didn't establish it in Kong, but the inhabitants never spoke. So I think it mm -hmm. would make sense that they were mute and just used sign language or else how do they communicate cuz it didn't seem like they ever talked to John C. Riley at all. Right, but they were also somewhat mythical. Like there's a line in mm -hmm. Kong Skull Island where John C. Riley is like these people are crazy. They also don't age. Did he say that? He said that. So, like, he's aged since he's been on that island, but he said these people don't. Oh, So he was like, I, he, he said, he was like, I think the island is is Magic. keeping them keeping them alive. So I think that it's like one of the tubes from the center of the earth tubes, tubes. is sending the, and I think that was actually, like, the plot line of it, that the whole, whole hollow earth theory is that tubes from hollow earth branch off and send hollow earth energy to specific areas of the planet, which is why those areas get titans and other shit. Mm -hmm. So I th Skull Island is like a direct connection to that. But that was the idea that like these people are also like 
magic slash maybe just radioactive and really fucking sick and weird. Uh, but, but, like, but like healthy and weird. Healthy and weird, but definitely dripping radiation. Okay. This actually, I like this. I like the idea that this little girl then maybe is older than she appears. Cause I'm like, she's Ooh, pretty, also possible. She's pretty young to have like a connection with Kong. Like she mm. could have only have known him for like three years. Right. Maximum. And also this other woman who's adopted her and learned her sign language. Like, yeah, like maybe you're like fifty and you're just aging, mega. You're Baby Yoda. That's po- she you could be are, Baby Yodaing. You're. I don't know the full. You're Grogu. I don't you're know the fifty, f- but you look like you're eight. <laughs> I don't know the full mythos of the Kong Skull Island inhabitants of when they stop aging. Maybe, <laughs> maybe it's after puberty. So maybe she is a child. But I see what you're saying. I think if radiation's doing it, you're just constantly um, aging slowly. Ooh, that like would... Like, if it's if you've if always been born magi- into radiation it. Radiation slash magical earth energy. Ah, I feel yeah. like always. I could fuck with that. I think she's old. Maybe she's old. This explains or approximately the, calm the same wisdom age. of the woman, of the girl. Mm, mm. Yeah. And okay. it, is, uh, it is American sign language she's using. So it's not a, a sign language native to the people of Skull oh, Island. was it? I was actually hoping it was like a new sign language that the natives used. All right. Uh, no, it was, uh, it, it was uh, American sign language. It was ASL. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I recognize like a couple of them, but it, it is ASL. I think the actress is, is deaf as well. Oh, that'd be lovely. Uh, I hope so. So uh, I, I, do, I do like that. And, uh, yeah, I, I think that the implication within the story is that the doctor character taught this uh, indigenous person of Skull Island American Sign Language to communicate better. That makes sense. And, and then, then she taught it to Kong. She taught it Because to Kong. she knew it already because she said she tried to teach it to Kong. Mm-hmm. But then, like, they had little secret private lessons, I guess. Little secret lessons. Where, where the girl taught Kong more. And also, I absolutely... Love the idea of Kong knowing sign language. Oh, absolutely. We we didn't say this on mic, but when we rewatched Skull Island like two days ago, uh, we actually were talking like, imagine if he learned sign language and he could talk to people. That'd be crazy. You were amped up for the idea of him learning sign language. <laughs> and then this movie is like, I can absolutely communicate. I'm Kong. I'm a fully fleshed out character. Yeah. I have goals. I have emotions. I'm the I am the lead of this movie. I don't know why Godzilla has top billing. Right. Kong is the lead Kong of this is film. Kong is absolutely the lead of this film. Also, huge respect to Kong's eyesight because <laughs> even if you teach that motherfucker sign language, which he he he's smart, he's learning it, he's got sign language, fully believable. That is like me teaching an ant sign language. Absolutely the same size differential. The same yeah. size mm-hmm. differential. And like the amount of like me squinting at an ant that's trying to t- use sign language to communicate with me, the sheer eyesight that would be required to see that kind of subtle difference. I think me as an adult woman and a regular eight year old girl, if she was trying to teach me, I'd be like, your hand's kind of small. <laughs> I would tell an eight-year-old girl with my size perspective uh-huh. that she's too small. So for Kong, it's a weird flex. <laughs> hey, they got tiny hands. I'm not. There's gonna... intricacies to sign language. Little girls have tiny hands. I'm not going to join you on this journey, but bless you for going out there <laughs> on that limb. I'm on a journey of not being able to learn from children. You heard it here first. Diana thinks eight-year-olds too small. Get them out of here. She can't even see their hands. Get me a Kawhi Leonard to teach me sign language. I need a big hand. Big hand. Okay. Eight-year-olds, their hands are too small. Get the fuck out of here. These are the hot, hard takes that Diana takes on this podcast. So, yeah, but but to, but to all this journey is me agreeing with you that that girl is too small to teach Kong sign language. Yeah. He wouldn't see any of it. Any of it at all. So... <laughs> Although, to be fair, I feel like most of the sign language was point at an ape doll, point in a hole. Right. And home. He and knew home. like three words. Home. Yeah, thank you. There was, uh, Actually, yeah. you know what? By the end, she had full sentences. She, she signed the word Godzilla to this guy. Right. She was he, like, go work with that dude. Get over it. So there's, yeah, there was a little more complex mm-hmm. at the end. But to, we got on a tangent of, of, the, of seeing a tiny creature do sign language. <laughs> but I agree with you. Kong is the lead character of this movie, and 
should have top billing, but you know, who cares about billing? They're they're creatures. But they've done such a terrific job of humanizing Kong in this movie. He is the lead character, unquestionably. That's the lead character of this movie, which why, which is why of all of the movies in this monsterverse, which have had mixed successes of human stories, I think Kong Skull Island being the best, Godzilla being a mixed blessing, and King of the Monsters being bad. This was the one, though, that needed the human story the least because Kong, they made Kong a human. Mm. They gave him language and thought and gave him a fish out of water story and looking for his family. Like there are complex human themes that Kong is exploring mm -hmm. and on a journey of self-discovery and reflection and looking for lost family, he is doing complex and, and with terrific animation that completely, that completely embody him with, with spirit and life and sadness and a hope so it's visually the most impressive one with the most story for Kong and the most human-like elements, which is why it's all the more bothersome that they they wasted screen time with more human components in this. See, I agree that Kong's the lead and he's on a journey and it's wonderful and it's the most compelling part of the movie. Him trying to find home, him being sad, him even just being cold in the Arctic. I'm like, I am engaged with what's going on with Kong. I don't feel like the humans are wasted. I feel like they're used poorly. Because I think when you have a monster who can actually communicate, you could bond with that monster as a human in such a way that it's way more interesting. Like, you could have, like, a rampage, like The Rock and whatever Rampage's name was in that movie. Right. I can't remember the Rampage. The film was name. called Rampage. The film was called Rampage. So I think a human-monkey bond can be very good as part of the story. Mm -hmm. I also like the movie Congo, where there was a lot of interaction between a monkey and a human. But I don't feel anything between the little girl and Kong even though it's cool that they communicate and I believe it's happening, there doesn't seem like he never saves her, which I think is a big part of, of mm -hmm. having a human monkey relationship in that way. He kind of saves her in a way from like a distance. He'll like flip the boat over that she's on, but he never like stands in front of Godzilla. So Godzilla won't hit her or something, Right. which I think is kind of key. Like even, even in Skull Island, he pulls Brie Larson out of the lake when she's drowning. Right. And that shows like a really deep bond of like, I cherish this human. So I didn't really feel that, and I think the hu the f movie could have made that work, but it didn't. Mm. So I don't mind that there's so many humans, but I do because it's poorly executed. Mm. <laughs> but Kong's story is so compelling. Really compelling. Opening on him being Truman showed was a wild <laughs> move. This I didn't even understand because... And it was a wild move that he's like in a he's in a she a force field, but it said they were still on Skull Island. Yeah. So I didn't understand why you'd need a force field. He can't leave. It's an island. I think the force field was to keep Godzilla away, or like it was to hide him from Godzilla. Well, that's what the storms do, though, isn't it? Because the storms were still happening outside of the force field. Right. I think also they also have a line that the storms had taken over the island. So They the, did kill the people. The previous lore was that it is this perfect island surrounded by storms, which is why planes and boats and people don't get to it. I think the implication here now is that maybe due to Titans returning or things going weird mm -hmm. with the Hollow Earth and Godzilla, the storms have overtaken the island. So they need it to protect him from the storms and hide him from Godzilla, and also just observe and monitor him and the Titans, which it seems like they've got stations around the world dedicated to monitoring different Titans. I guess monitoring, I think, would make more sense. Because, yeah, protecting him and keeping him there didn't track to me. But when you've got one really contained Titan, I can see, I guess, why you'd want to just watch that guy. You're like, this guy can't get to shore. He's right. stuck out here. Let's just keep an eye on Kong. We'll, we'll stream it reality show style. We'll get some sponsors. We'll do what we need to. And there should be people watching. He didn't want to be on the Truman Show, which is what was so great about it. The fact that he's smart, and this is also like dumb, but wildly charming, and I was fully in, on board. The fact that I'm like, this guy figured out he was in a Truman Show quicker than Truman. <laughs> Like, there was no, like, my dad told me not to swim out past the breaker. Just with three seconds flat, Kong grabs a tree and is like, 
fuck your Truman Show. Kong definitely got sedated at one point, woke up, and was like, nope, nope, nope. Oh, that's this, not the I'm real I'm on sky. television. Nope, nope, that's not the sun. <laughs> I know what holograms look like. How does he know what holograms look He's like? He's got that great eyesight. We already talked about it. He does he have the terrific He can see a little eyesight. girl doing sign language. Mm-hmm. He can see if it's a hologram sky. Yeah. And he wants out. I do also like the opening a lot of... It kind of reminded me of the opening of Shrek, just some music playing and Kong walking around going about his day, like taking a shower at a waterfall, scratching his back on a mountain. Like This is very human. A, and beautiful, wonderful opening for a movie that of which Kong is the star. To be like, look at this fun guy having a lazy day, so charming, so well animated. I can't get over how well they have animated everything in this movie. Like, I don't want to underplay how how great a job that they do on Godzilla as well. But the human aspects of him, how good it looks, how they do feel large, and they, like, move slowly but quickly, but humanoid. It's so interesting. It is really good, to the point where I watch this movie, and I don't think at any point that I think, yeah, Godzilla and Kong aren't real. Like, I watch this movie, and I'm like, those are real things in this scene. Like, Mm. I'm... My, 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 like, lizard brain doesn't detect anything. Like, I would be Truman showed by this. Like, Kong wouldn't. Kong would see through it. But I would absolutely forget that these are not here. Like, Godzilla, I think, looks equally good. Um, I like what you're saying about how he's big and he moves slow. But he moves faster than Godzilla, which is nice. Because Godzilla's, like, bulkier and he's got more muscle to him. So it is kind of interesting for the different, like, strategies of, like, well, Kong's just got to outrun the guy. He's got to be more speed because Godzilla's got more power and he's kind of clunky and slow. So, yeah, they they do a great job of giving them different features, like, physically and Mm -hmm. within the the actual movement design. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just really, really crushes it visually. And from from a visual component, the other thing the movie does really well that I enjoy that is a little trite and played out, which is the 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 orange and blue tones. Mm-hmm. Uh, classic now. Which is which is classic now to the point that like ten years ago there were articles about how trite and overplayed and overdone uh, that the um, the the they don't call it orange and blue um, like teal and magenta or whatever mm-hmm. it is that it's typically called. But you you can find, if you Google search, like, orange and blue movies, there have been articles for a decade or two now about how it's overdone and it is just played out, especially in blockbuster action movies. Oh, yeah. I remember I haven't worked for Cracked since, like, 2011, and we had articles about it already back then. So yeah. um, I just remember, like, there's, like, a color wheel, and these are the most appealing colors to us that go together. Yeah, so and that's why movies use it now. And they're complementary, and they're high contrast. So there's scientific reasons to do it, but it's just kind of bland and played out, but not in this movie. In this movie, this color palette really works for me because they also they also really embed it in the theme and in visual representation of who's good and bad of like mecha godzilla being the reddish orange and then like the power beams of the of the axe and godzilla being blue so they use it to represent good and evil in different scenes as well so it does have a thematic purpose as well as a visual purpose and it's just stylized really well that it looks cool so it is i think the the Ultimate example of a visual effect that is overplayed, trite, and kind of overdone, where it's just, it's simple, it looks cool, it represents things thematically, and it's just really well executed. The colors of this movie are brilliant. The colors are really nice. I actually thought you were going to say more background colors, because I thought a really interesting way they got color was that, um, is there, are they in Japan in the final fight? Yeah. Uh, Hong Kong. In Hong Kong. Okay. Uh, Hong Kong is like has all these neon buildings. Mm-hmm. So it's like nighttime and like that's causing the glow of like all this neon color to happen to give the fight a really interesting look instead of just being like moonlight or sunlight. And also the hollow earth is just crazy colors for because yeah. it's in the earth and there's light for some reason. I don't know where the sun is, but somehow the sun is always sunsetting in the hollow earth, a place where there's no sun. Hollow earth is bananas. Kong just brings sunset. Yes. We saw Skull Island constantly sunset. Yeah. Now you're in the hollow earth again, constantly sunset. All we need is some more beautiful people to stand in the light. And just and, look gorgeous. And just look gorgeous along with Kong. Mm-hmm. Now, I do think there is a huge problem with the monsters in this movie, though. And I think that is that this director had no reverence for the reveal of them. This, what do you mean? Because the monsters just show up and they're just fully shown. 
both Godzilla and Kong. So when you think of like Godzilla one, we're talking about how the giant scale, they don't reveal the, they don't reveal any of the monsters for like three quarters of the way through the movie. You just get feet and you get really close. And then in Kong Skull Island, you're like through the POV of the helicopters for such a long time. You don't get a good view on Kong. But this movie, like the very first Godzilla attack, Godzilla just comes out of the water full force, like no like creeping tension, no fear. And they're just like, oh shit, Godzilla's here. He's right there. And then they show a big shot of Godzilla and there's no, there's no ramp up of tension. There's no little reveals of what these guys look like. It's kind of like the movie saying like, you know what they look like. And I like that, frankly. I don't like that because I feel like that's assuming we just rewatched the other movies. And I think mm. there's a lot of people who haven't rewatched a Godzilla movie since the last one came out three years ago. And right. they're like, I'd like to feel the creeping tension again. I think that this isn't that movie. Like I this want is why it I'm okay. I, I see what you, I see what you're saying, but this is the the fun spectacle movie. This mm-hmm. isn't the creeping tension like a uh, hor- horror movie. This is just fun spectacle, and you need to see fun spectacle. I think it would be actually kind of frustrating if they weren't showing the creatures in this one, or if they were doing like little teases, or if it was more darkness. Well, by the end, you would show them like for their big fights, but I, right. I wouldn't mind a little bit of like teasing, like we're gonna hold off a bit. Like I feel like I saw them within the first five minutes, mm. and I was kind of done. Oh, okay, okay. I, I can respect that you feel that way. I do not feel it at all. Oh, I felt that even, super hard. Yeah. Even without rewatching, even if I hadn't rewatched the ones previously. They'd done that, you know. They'd done mm. this. They'd done the epic reveal of Kong and Kong Skull Island, like the helicopters coming up and his silhouette and sunset. It's a great hero shot. They had done the reveal. A whole Godzilla 2014 was a whole movie on slowly revealing that character. I think if they replayed those notes, even if it's not fresh in people's memories. It is just playing a greatest hits. It is a replay. And I think all good monster movies, whether it's a kaiju or not, like Alien to Aliens, you've got to start showing more and changing the speed and tempo and pace. And I don't think it really matters whether or not you watch them back to back. I think it is just a matter of like keeping things fresh and different. And while I agree with you, I like Kong better. I like Godzilla better as a movie. Like those individual movies I liked better. I liked those tension better. I still don't think it would be right to rehash it on this one. Oh, but I, I think, did, I would rather watch those initial moments from those other two any day of the week than mm. rewatch this movie. But I think this was still the right decision for this movie. Oh, I still, yeah, I still hard disagree. Respect your opinion on that one. But yeah, I just, because there's also like the battles don't feel like they matter, especially when it's not Godzilla versus Kong. Like that mm. first Godzilla attack feels like they were like, huh, again, just. What are you going to do, you know? Godzilla. And I'm like, I feel like it should feel like a big deal when Godzilla yeah. attacks. Yeah. And this movie doesn't feel like that. Um, so, yeah, that, that I think is a big misstep with the monsters for me personally and the enjoyment. But I get what you're saying that it's been done. But I'm okay if they do it again. Mm. <laughs> it's a classic way for a reason. And I don't think it has to be horror. I think it can just be like, whoa, what was that? Now, I think... That first attack, does that happen right away? The first attack on like the cybernetic company. I forget what it's called. That was uh, the first. Apex. And Apex. it's within like 10 minutes of the movie starting. I think we've just mm. met Bernie. Yeah. And he's going through and he's trying to sneak down. And then Godzilla's just there. So the Apex attack, I have no feelings towards that. So I, I, can, I can 100% agree with you on the Apex one. There's not tension. It doesn't feel built up or earned. And the visuals don't really like make Godzilla feel epic yet. I'm okay with Kong being the fun, fluffy, I'm taking a shower in a waterfall. Oh, that's super fright. I'm, I have no problem with mm. this. <laughs> but the first Godzilla one, I'll agree with you. But where I do feel that tension is the first Godzilla-Kong meeting in the ocean. I feel a ton of tension and think that that is a meticulously, almost perfect action sequence. The stuff with Godzilla and Kong is great. I do love they came up with great tension of like, Kong is chained up. We have to get him unchained. Then he can't breathe underwater, which is a huge deficit. Oh my God, you're, where are you even going to, like, if he blows, if he blows up all these ships, where are you even going to stand, Kong? Mm -hmm. You don't have a ship to stand on. It's going to be a hard situation. That fight, I think, I think is my favorite fight probably between the two. I also love God, uh, Kong, just for a second, like feeling like he's in a buddy cop movie when he sees the laser charging in the water and he has to just like jump off the, the ship. Slow mo oh jumping God, away from, from an explosion. explosion. This was that was that was the most like this that almost brought this movie up to a like for me. That one mm-hmm. moment alone, such an incredible moment. <laughs> like such just a 
a classic action trope given to a giant ape running from his life. Yeah. So fucking good. This this joy and enthusiasm we have in our voice the second we talk about scenes that are focused on Kong mm. is so like what from the waterfall to the jumping away from the explosion. Oh, it's just a shame so much of the human story falls flat because, yeah, jumping away from the explosion is so So cool. funny. So cool. And you're like, you're worried about Kong every time he's underwater. You're like, we got to get him up. He needs air. The, the so... coming up for air created tension, too, as mm -hmm. well. Like, just this, like, please get up. Please, get, you got to get up and get a breath, Kong. Mm, but, like, there's so little care for the human element, as you said, because even within that fight scene... They don't do any, like, they do a terrible job with geography of, like, how to un unhook Kong, how to uncuff him. Like, mm -hmm. I have no idea how to unhook, how to uncuff Kong. It doesn't feel like the characters know how. There's no, there's nothing in their way from uncuffing him, but you have to, like, get underwater at one point. And I'm like, I don't know what you're trying to get to. Right. You haven't laid out any of the geography or the obstacles in your way of releasing Kong. So like, there's just no care for the human element, as you said, but like so much love for this Kong versus Godzilla mm -hmm. fight happening on, on ship carriers in the middle of the ocean. So good. Yeah. It, because I, I'm so with you, that little moment, that little human moment. And I think it's supposed to be the moment where Alexander Skarsgård's character like turns around. Cause so far he's meant to be someone we dislike, which is also a weird journey they've taken this character on. Because he never seems like he was a coward. Like when was he a coward? Yeah, he's his character's all over the place. Mm -hmm. First of all, he starts off not even involved in the plot of this movie. Then a villain comes, sees him once, and is like, go on an expedition with my daughter. Then never interacts with him again. Mm -hmm. They never have another scene together. Never see each other again. Uh, and he's just like, I'm a book author who's kind of washed up. And then he shows up on the boat, and everyone, and uh, uh, the scientist and her surrogate daughter are like, this fucking coward. He's an author who wrote a book about a hollow... What are we, he's not the bad guy here. But he also, I don't know what happened, but his brother died trying to get to Hollow Earth when the instant gravity killed him. Yeah. But I, like, were you a coward about it? Did you run away from the gravity? Like what, is that why you're a coward? Is it because he's a little afraid of Kong? Which you should be reasonably Reasonable. cautious. None of us are daredevil. Like it is, it is this movie not knowing what to do about its villains mm -hmm. because he, for two scenes, and it's tough because those are establishing scenes. He is the villain proxy, mm -hmm. where the the villain uh, in the black suit, I don't even know the actor or the character's name, but what the apex is your name? cybernetics Walter guy. Walter Simmons. Is that the actor? That well, is the character. The character. So Walter. Walter. So when the apex CEO, Walter, walks in and is like, I'm evil villain, I enjoy computers, go to the center of the earth for me. I wear my coat like a cape? No, I'm not evil. evil. And then this like, like book author is just like, okay, I like books, I'll go to the center of the earth. And then since the villain's not around and doesn't interact with anyone for the whole film, for a couple of scenes, Alexander Skarsgård is meant to be the villain proxy. To be like, the villain came, tagged in Alexander Skarsgård, and was like, you represent me and my company, tag, you're in. And then we have three scenes between him and the scientist lady and uh, and the child where he's the the villain proxy. Yeah, and they, they, and they, they, quickly, they don't get a good vibe off him. They're like, mm, no, no, mm, no. There's no villain here. You were sent by a man in a cape. You're the villain proxy. And they establish these relationships immediately as being very distrustworthy. We're the heroes. You're clearly the villain proxy. We don't like you. Then the villain's daughter randomly shows up and is like, he's my daddy. I'm the villain proxy. And then the movie just switches to be like, this is who we don't like. Mm -hmm. Forget that we just spent three scenes setting up that he's the, the villain proxy. Forget that. We fucked up. That was actually just to fill time. Well, then why didn't you get the daughter in right away? Why wasn't there always an evil person? Mm -hmm. Yeah, two, two scenes establishing that maybe not even evil, but a ver an entire scene devoted to calling him a coward when you've established nothing cowardly that he's done. He's yeah. just been completely upfront with the information that he has because mm -hmm. he doesn't work for Apex. He doesn't know about this whole steal the energy thing at all. So... The, it, see, it felt like the only reason to call him a coward was to be like, he's brave now. I'm like, but he has to be a coward first. Yeah. <laughs> he is brave at the end, sure. Yeah. But you can't just call someone a coward and then be proud of them when they're brave. 
Yeah, like he doesn't never runs away from conflict. He avoids it just because someone's an author and they're not like I'm military commando number beef or whatever tough guy shit you want to give them. Like that doesn't make them a coward. Yeah, you weren't a coward for not going into the hollow earth with your brother. Your brother yeah. maybe shouldn't have gone into the hollow earth without knowing what happens yeah. in there. Send a drone in first. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Don't get crushed by the weird gravity. And then on the like on the subject of not setting up scenes properly, so that moment where he releases Kong is supposed to be like the turning point for this character to be like he's cool now. So they have the scene before or like moments before when Godzilla's coming, and Rebecca Hall's character is like you have to release God, you have to release Kong, unchain him, release him. And I don't know what that means. I think they need to go out with a key and physically unchain him. Then the boat goes upside down, and Alexander Skarsgård gets courage. <laughs> Uh, he like, takes a little courage drink. He become he become is, he reaches the end of the Wizard of Oz and finds his courage. It was in him all along. Michael's secret stuff. And he dives under the water, but I don't know what he's diving for. And it turns out to just be like a random iPad with some buttons. But yeah, I didn't know the geography of this scene or what he's diving for or how you want to hook Kong. They had at least visual storytelling even though they never drew attention to it, that the the neck collar Kong was wearing had a bunch of like green tubes on it with little points sticking that. out. So I think the idea is that the tranquilizer is built into his mm. collar. So releasing him will also then allow him to be full strength and not docile as well. But they never really established that either. That was just thankfully good visual storytelling and good work from uh, from the creative department putting together the look of this film. But yeah, just real missed opportunities. But everything with Kong in that scene is so absolutely killer. It's so killer, but also it's a huge misstep to make Alexander Skarsgård brave so early. Mm. Because then at the end, when he goes to do the sacrifice play with the ship to restart Kong's heart, we're like, yeah, you were already brave earlier. Right. You, this is not your character growth. Your character growth happened in act one. Yeah. Even though either you or Millie Bobby Brown is the lead of this movie. Yeah. Um, so like the 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 brave moment needed to be the end. Mm -hmm. And also that was the only good joke in this movie, but it was a killer good joke. Yes, uh, yeah, <laughs> him using the the sign language for cat for coward to mean brave. To tell a little girl that she's brave who can't understand. He's like, you're very brave, and does the hand sign for a coward, but he thinks it means brave. So funny. Really good joke. That is, I, I'm, whichever one of you five writers wrote that joke, mm -hmm. great work. The rest of you other four, you're really struggling comedy-wise. <laughs> You're not hitting those yeah. beats. Yeah, that that really did land well. I think that that was a, a strong moment of comedy. But you're right; it's there was no growth. He grew. He was literally called a coward and then behaved brave in two back to back scenes. Yeah, and he was never a coward like underground when they get like guns pulled on them. Mm -hmm. He like tries to stop the monsters as best he can. He's just a man who's not military. Yeah, so, yeah, the, he's. The CEO's daughter, the villain proxy slash lady CEO, really just takes all of his Evil. character intentions mm -hmm. the second she shows up, which is his second scene. And speaking of how the human element of this movie sucks, she sucks. Woof. 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 What a bad actress. Oh, my God. I don't often just come out and say, you're a bad actress. But, like, no one in this movie is really crushing it. And then she shows up and both of us were like, this girl sucks. Holy, what a bad performance. I don't know what she's doing. I don't know what she is doing. To give an actress who can barely act a line of looking at someone and saying, are you impressed? Oof, 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 no, because I'm... Because literally the only response is, no, not no. in any way, shape, or form. You are the least impressive person you I've sure seen have, in this movie. You sure have shiny hair. Yeah. I'll give you that. Yeah, you sure seem to magically change jackets every scene. She did have a lot of jackets, right? Yeah. <laughs> How I, much luggage did she bring? Right? I don't understand Everyone else that. had one flight suit. Yeah. And she had a million. She like had, She was like... Pad me in episode one. Yeah, like yeah, just yeah. Episode, ch change, change, change. Do not understand why her character is there written like this and why this performance is like this. Oh, the only thing that's nice when you have a really bad performance is when that character is killed. Yeah. So like her little ship gets crushed by Kong and you're like, yes. We actually, we actively cheered. Oh yeah, like not just, cause, not, and not because she was evil, but because she won't be in the rest of the movie. Yeah, you're like we I don't have to see this character again. <laughs> yeah, Kong. And like they did have such little touches with Kong, even in moments of like that. He catches the ship 
and he looks in it to make sure the humans he likes aren't in it before he crushes it. Yeah. So he's not just a killing machine. He's still very conscious. He's still making active choices. And he's like, eh, humans I don't like, crush. <laughs> Gotta make sure real quick. So yeah, God, Kong's journey in this is so sad. <laughs> It is so tragic. Yeah, the 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 arc of like I've lost my home and the fact that he's lost it even before they took him away. Like the home is destroyed, its inhabitants gone. He's got one last person to protect. Mm-hmm. And it feels like if they take the shields down, the storms are going to kill him probably. Like yeah. it'll destroy all the food and he won't have anything to eat. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, he's he's just, and to have to drop him in the Arctic, and then Alexander Skarsgård has one line of like, we're out of sedative, we can't bring him back. Like, we don't he's have, stuck here. Our armada was destroyed, we don't have ships to take him back. His We've only got option is the is the hole. Yeah. He's got to go in the hole. There's But like, not in a mean villain way. Mm-hmm. Just in a like, we would have brought him back, but the ships are gone. So it's, oh, it breaks my heart. I mean, he, he ends up pretty happy by the end, as happy as he can be. But, yeah. But it breaks my heart. Yeah, it's a, it's a really sad journey, and he finds, I guess, his ancestral home throughout it, so I don't know how to feel about that, if that's a good or a bad thing, that there's no other Kongs. I mean, obviously, that's a bad thing, but it's a, it's a strange ending to his journey. I have so many questions about the Hollow Earth, and a lot of them... The Hollow Earth's nonsense. The Hollow Earth is nonsense, and a lot of them I won't even question. Like, okay, two gravities, energy balls, of course, it's a Hollow Earth, whatever. There's pterodactyls and stuff, da 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 but I, I, I hate that I do have one question, and it's who built all the shit? Like, did the Kongs make a mm. fortress? Uh, like, I know Kong is smart, but they're not like, we made a castle smart. We made a docking charging station for our axe kind of smart. Right, right. They're not builders, because Kong's never built anything on Skull Island to live in. He's never made a house. Mm. So he is I also d- supposed to be, like, a child. Not by now. He was I don't a know how long the f- they live for, you know? <laughs> He's at least 60. Yeah, 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 but they might live for like hundreds or mm. thousands of years and in I guess his their parents crazy might not like have... radiation energy that mm. doesn't... Al- mm. If the humans on Skull Island aren't aging... I guess then- if Godzilla is thousands of years old, yeah, then he, can, he might be. And his parents might have died before they taught him how to make a house. Yeah, over He's, that time, no maybe. Skills. Maybe or maybe still a charging station for your axe. That is pretty bananas. That's a lot. Perfectly, perfectly crafted in there. Yeah. Whoever made that axe, also. Unless there's some also like some type of human pro humanoid progenitor that also lived down there in the Hollow Earth. I would love if there was a giant human down there. They'd yeah. have to be real big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. they built that entire castle. Yeah, yeah, like a very like a, a very Norse god type of like human giant where like. Yeah, maybe mm. not quite as intelligent and as advanced as, like, our society, but big and pretty smart. Oh, I was thinking of just Ant-Man, but big. Mm. He's, in, he's in Giant Man giant form, man and mode. he's like, I live down here in Giant Man. Mm. He thinks he's in the quantum zone? He's just in the hollow earth. Okay, I was thinking... I was. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking more like Thor Frost Giants, oh, frost but giants. without the cold. But, like, that level mm. of, like, they're not a super advanced society that's building space spacefaring ships. But they could build a castle. But they're building a castle with runes that maybe they don't understand the magic of how it charges stuff. So maybe something like that in the earth. But no, I think it was just a bunch of Kongs who built a, an axe charging station. But who cares? The Hollow Earth thing is one of the dumbest plot things in the movie that make no sense that I give the biggest pass to because I'm like, whatever, this movie's bananas. You just, one of the conceits is you have to accept that the earth is hollow and that's where ancient creatures lived slash still live and there are tubes that go from that place to random places on earth. Honestly, because I'm not into monster movies and like nothing against them, they're just not for me, it, this was the thing that made me feel like my mother the most when she watches a Marvel movie. Because right. like I'll watch a Marvel movie and they won't explain something and I'll be like, but in the comics. So it's this. So me watching a hollow earth that is not explained and has weird gravity and everything, I'm just like, some people watching this understand this mm. and already knew it was coming and know about what it is. And I'm not one of those people and I do feel a little left out, but I won't question it except for who built stuff. There's a, se- want to know there's a secret stuff. little earth inside the earth. <laughs> What's to understand? What? What? And there's somehow sun. Don't worry about it. The sun could be lava, maybe. 
It could be, but there was vi- pretty <laughs> there was visibly a, a sun going on there. <laughs> There's a sun in the earth. Yeah. Mm. So there was a sun in there somehow. But I guess they were there for weird energy. They had to they had to Wi-Fi up some energy up to the top of the planet, you know? Right. As you do. And you just phone call up some energy to the top of the planet. I accepted a hollow earth. <laughs> I did not accept cell phone calling energy up to the, the planet. That was that was the one where I'm like, no, fuck nope, you. No, nope, no, nope. no. What? Because the whole movie gave me the impression their goal was to like mine or physically grab some of this and bring it up. Because Godzilla, because Kong even like hits a couple like glowing energy rocks and you're like, that's what they need then. They're they gonna need bring like that up, a good one of these. Feed it into the butt of Mecha Godzilla or whatever. <laughs> into and then, the butt, it, suppository. Yeah, suppository. Uh, and then Mecha Godzilla will have power. But instead they just take a sample and she using, I guess, the cell phone towers in the hollow earth somehow Wi Fi's it up to the surface. And then the evil guy up there is just like, oh. Energy. That's it. Upload. <laughs> and then his Mecha Godzilla has energy. He opened up uTorrent. Yeah. He downloaded, he downloaded some special hollow earth energy and he just put it into Mecha Godzilla because that's how energy transference works. He, that is absolutely. And you know what is so upsetting? Because you're right, there should be no Wi Fi. But then there is. And I'm also even kind of like, well, Godzilla did make a big direct hole. Godzilla did shoot them mm. one big hole that maybe mm. you could get a signal through, but there should have been one big rock. That he didn't had to shoot get the out. hole until after the cell phone signal. You don't think it was till after it the was, cell it phone? It was after the cell okay. phone signal. Yeah. All right. Well, then never mind. Forget his Wi Fi hole. Yeah. But yeah, so they, it's so ridiculous they didn't bring a physical rock up. He downloaded energy. He, they. Without any tubes. And the whole thing is that there's tubes. <laughs> it's, this whole movie is about tubes. It's so bananas, ridiculous. But uh, uh, whatever, whatever. There's a hollow earth. That doesn't bother me. Uploading energy somehow <laughs> bothers me. We all have, because we don't know anything about hollow earth. But right. we know things about energy. We know you need a cord and you need a yes. plug. Yeah, you can't just <laughs> download it. You can't just charge your phone by spinning it in the air and hoping mm. some energy hits it. Right. Or like downloading an app and being like, constant energy, please, mm. from this app. Doesn't work. And I didn't like Mecha Godzilla. I wasn't a huge fan of it either. He I, didn't seem all that dangerous. Uh, I think he seemed dangerous. I just didn't like the look or style of it. And I, I think that maybe it was just, it should have been earlier in the movie mm. uh, as something for them to team up against. But I don't know. I just felt like I was a little disappointed in the villain for not having more creativity. Because mm. he was like, I'm going to make a, like a, a kaiju killer uh, or a Jaeger. Basically, it's a Jaeger. Yeah. But it's a mecha Godzilla. I'm going to make, make something to fight Godzilla. And you're like, Godzilla is prime example of a good robot? Like you couldn't come up with like a cooler design. Mm. Like I feel like it's not very fast. <laughs> like it's not really moving. I'm, I'm make gonna, a megazord. I'm make gonna, something better. <laughs> I mean, it basically is the dragon sword. And kind of, but I think the dragon sword was a little faster. Maybe a little. And bit also faster. turned into a human person. Yes, that's true. That's true. So, I, but but yeah, I I. Uh, I think you have to do Mecha Godzilla just because that's the classic creature. You can't just be like, and now we're doing. Although there is like a humanoid robot one that is basically um, oh. uh, like a Voltron type of thing that oh, is from I think Godzilla I've seen ones. Of this. So there is one of those that exists that maybe they could have done. But, but Mecha no, Godzilla I'm, I'm is joking. the classic. You absolutely have to make Mecha Godzilla, or the audience would be like, "Who's this guy? Yeah. Who the who the f- either Mecha Godzilla or it has to look like one of the other Titans? Like, choose your I, favorite. Make I, a make a mech of that guy. I agree with that. Mm-hmm. Mecha Godzilla did lead to probably my two favorite points in this movie, though. Um, my first is when Millie Bobby Brown like sees Mecha Godzilla for the first time, and she says something. I think it's along the lines of, "This is why Godzilla attacked. They're trying to replace him." And I am so tickled at the idea that Godzilla was like, a robot's not taking my job. <laughs> He's just, he will not be automated. And he sensed it before it occurred. He sensed his mm-hmm. job coming. He got a pink slip yeah. underwater. They were like, you're fired. We got a robot. You got your two weeks notice, Godzilla. And he was like, absolutely not. I am destroying the hell out of this thing. <laughs> so the idea that he sensed he was being replaced by a robot tickles me so much as like, a thing that's just dumb enough. 
Um, <laughs> it is just dumb enough. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that that is like the original Mecha Godzilla story is that like Godzilla protects and then eventually humans were he like. He also attack. He also attack. But eventually humans were like, let's replace his job. We don't trust him. Which is fair. Yeah. We, we, he doesn't know sign language. We're not talking to Godzilla. Absolutely fair. So, okay. Uh, I, li- <laughs> I do like that he's just like, no, I don't want to be replaced. I don't. I want to keep my job. I do want Even to though keep- he's doing it for free. He's just doing it for the love of the game. He is just fighting Titans for love of the game, but we're like, what if you get too old, Rocky? What if you can't mm. do it anymore? And he's like, have you seen I'm Rocky th- Five? And I'm thousands of years old. He's, I'm just fine. I don't know. He's probably like got ice bags on while he's underground. He's like, oh, my joints. I, him absorbing Earth core radiation is his like ice bath, basically. <laughs> ice bath. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. After after each game, he does need to like rest <laughs> and fuel up for sure. For sure. But I, I, for me, the Mecha Godzilla thing was just that I just didn't like the look of it. I, it felt very early two thousands. Michael Bay Transformers of this Ooh. like the the kind of like ho- super glossy, super shiny, and also kind of hollow. Like it felt like it was just the skeleton. It didn't feel like it had a lot of weight to it, like it, like yeah. Godzilla and Kong do. Yeah. <laughs> so that was my big problem is that I from a design aspect, I did not like how it looked. It did feel just kind of like aluminum. It didn't feel like it was even a strong metal. It looked like it was made out of recycled tin cans. Yeah, I wasn't worried it could beat Godzilla. Yeah. Like it wasn't bigger than him. It wasn't it didn't appear to be stronger than him. It didn't have any particular impressive thing happen. Like it shot a laser at one of the skull crushers, but I'm like Godzilla's got a laser. Like this yeah. isn't do you have two lasers? Like do you have hand lasers? Like do something else. Hand laser might be cool. Yeah. Iron yeah. Man, Iron Man that thing up. Extra lasers. Some at best, you just made the exact same thing. You made yeah. an even. You made a draw of a match, <laughs> and not something that escalates it. But I agree, he doesn't look impressive. You're not like, whoa, that's cool. Mm-hmm. You're like, oh, it's if Cyborg was Godzilla. Yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> oh, that's what it is. It is very Justice League Cyborg. Justice League Cyborg. Yeah. Yeah, that's super. That's super shiny and, and kind of hollow. Him, they didn't give him like a cool paint job, like Iron Man or something, or make him look interesting. He really is just Godzilla if metal. Yeah, mm-hmm. and and weirdly enough, I feel like all of these giant facilities that they house him in feel more industrial than he does. Because he he does feel very cyborg from Justice League. It feels like space metal made by space people on an alien planet that he came from Cybertron. It doesn't feel like humans made him in any way. When you look at the building and stuff that he's stored in, it is this very, like, the doors that open up to release him are this, like, iris, like a shutter from a camera. And it's, like, these, like, interlocking giant feel like they're made out of, like, a thousand ton raw steel doors. And then he just kind of floats out. Mm -hmm. But not in a way where you're like, oh, he's going to be so fast when he fights Godzilla. You're just like, oh no, I think Godzilla can take him. I'm not too worried about this. But like, you obviously have to have Mecha Godzilla so the the two boys can team up and become buds. Of course. This is a a plot point you need. Although it leads to my second favorite moment, which is when Kong wakes up and the little girl is like, you have to help Godzilla. And he's just like, he doesn't say this, but they do such a good job of his face because he's just like, Godzilla sucks. I fucking hate that guy. (laughs) He doesn't want to help him so hard. It's just like, that guy, uh, that guy sucks. He broke my arm. And she's like, you gotta help him. And he's like, fine. For <laughs> you, sure. Maybe, sure. Maybe he is quite young, <laughs> now that I say it. Yeah? <laughs> maybe he is a young man, that Kong. He's just like, I fucking hate that guy. I don't want to. So cranky. And, and I, I, I love how they make him, how they have him emote and convey that information. I also love Energy Axe as well. Oh. Energy Weapon is really fun, and it does help level the playing field in a fight match between him and Godzilla, where, let's face it, Godzilla should win and does even with the axe, but the axe helps a lot. I really liked that they let him win one round, because even they, which they even right. have, I think Skarsgård even said that he's like, Kong wins round two. I'm like, oh, cool. He did get a win. That's nice. Yeah, yeah. The, the axe is a really nice touch because it would be weird if they just suddenly gave him a superpower. Because right. he is just a big ape. If he suddenly shot a laser or had an energy beam or some other cool, crazy power. But the axe is 
The axe is him being like, no, I'm smart and I use tools. I'm an ape. His superpower <laughs> is in heightened intelligence and the yeah, the ability yeah. to use tools. Yeah, so him being able to block the the charge with the axe to like also hit Godzilla with the charged axe for Godzilla to do like the the fucking buddy team up move of charging the axe for him so mm. he can beat up the robot. Fucking great. Again, this is the this is the water fighter all over again. This is this is what you get excited about and what makes the movie actually work for a few minutes. It's all it's all the Kong stuff. All the Kong stuff. The humans stuff. are a waste, with the exception of scientist and daughter. The humans are a waste. And and that is actually one of the highlights that I will say, as much as the performances in this movie with uh, the one exceptionally exceptional low of uh, daughter CEO. Everything is kind of mediocre performance-wise, with the exception of Rebecca Hall, who plays mm. the, the scientist. I think she is phenomenal, and I always enjoy her in every film that I've seen her in, and she's always like fourth or fifth build, underappreciated, doing the most with the least, and I'm just going to have to like look up her filmography and actively watch more movies with her in it. Because I feel like she is just wall to wall a phenomenal performer, and it's always a treat. I can I can totally agree with that because she's given very little to do. She's mostly there to kind of be a mom to the little girl, but she's compelling, and her scenes are interesting, and her performance is very good. Mm -hmm. She's working with nothing and making it work, which is yeah. the mark of a great actress. Yeah, she's she you feel that she feels for Kong, but she's not overacting it. She's not overattached. She's still very much a scientist about it. She's like, I want to help him, but we need shields and we're gonna need a big boat and like we're gonna have to do this right. She's not an idiot about it, which is what's nice about the character and yeah. her performance is good. I think she's an Iron Man three. She is. Yeah, she's, that's she her. Is. Yeah, okay. yeah. I haven't looked at her IMDb. Yeah, she's she's done quite a bit. And, and she's uh, always good. But always She's never good. a lead. You're right. Never she's probably a lead. a lead in some indies that we haven't seen. But yeah, and and she's also a a, a really well done, like a good comedic talent as well. I've seen her in oh, some shit. comedies as well. She can deliver comedy as well as she can deliver drama. A versatile, well ranged actor who I want to see in more things as the the primary lead and uh and i you get a taste of it here but i think she's still like third or fourth build yeah because she's she's below millie and uh scars guard for yeah. sure yeah and she she shouldn't be mm. this this movie should be kong and her i can see that or kong and her and the daughter like constantly 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 yeah yeah <laughs> i'd be okay with that all right well i'm feeling good about uh godzilla versus kong how you feeling i'm Feeling good. I'm feeling better about it. Like talking it out, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. talking about the exciting parts and, yeah, and and the boring parts. I don't know if I'd ever watch it again. I would not. You would not. No. Yeah. I'm I'm kind also, of on also, the fence. Also, you know what? I'm just gonna be blunt. No hotties. No, there is there is. This movie has like very attractive people. Yeah. No hotties. No hotties. For Diane, at least. No. Skarsgård does nothing for me. No, I get it. It's not as... I've heard people really like the dad from Friday Night Lights, though, from a friend of ours. We've been told. <laughs> We've been told. But it's not, the, it's not the thirst trap that's Kong Skull Island is. Oh, no. No. See, that's your problem that's a right there. Kong Skull Island is a movie I'll watch literally any day of the week mm -hmm. without question and no hesitation. If you want to make me feel for your human characters, you got to give me some hotties. They don't all have to be hotties. No, but a couple have to be hotties. Gotta, it's an ensemble action movie cast. Yeah. What are you thinking? Yeah. What were you thinking? All right. Well, let's go in for the close where we ask the final question of what would you change? So now that we discussed everything about this movie, what would you change about it if you could change anything? But before we do ask the final question, we want to remind all of you, you can, if you've already done it, you can skip ahead. If you haven't, you have to listen. That is the law. That is gavel. Gavel law. law. You please rate, review, subscribe, follow on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, press the button to, to follow or subscribe. It's free to do that. And that helps us move up the charts, find new listeners and be more discoverable. And as well, leave a rating and review. Give a five stars. You can give as, as much wording as you'd like or as little as one word. You can say good, noise, like it. We love a noise. You can keep it simple. You don't have to write an essay just write a little review because that encourages people to download it and listen to the podcast. That's how we get new listeners and how we grow and expand and uh, and, and and keep doing the thing. And if you don't have uh, uh, iTunes or an Apple phone, you can also leave a review on Podcast Addict, one of my favorite podcast apps. There you go. Places so, you can leave reviews, guys. There's, there's lots of options. So be sure you're following, subscribing, rating, and reviewing 
Share it with your friends. These are all free ways to support the podcast. If you do want to support the podcast monetarily and get some bonuses for doing it, you can hit us up over on Patreon at patreon.com slash from superheroes. And over there, depending on what you want to give, you can give as little as a buck, as much as you can afford. And at different levels, you'll get different cool bonuses. You'll always get something no matter what you can contribute. But if you contribute the $10 a month level, the hero level patron, you get bonus episodes of this podcast every single month. You get immediate access to the back catalog. So many episodes of this podcast, you guys. It's about a topic we never cover on the regular podcast, and they are ad-free, delightful episodes. And you'll also get a nickname from this girl right here. You also get special nicknames from Which is more fun Diana. than it sounds. It is pretty damn fun. <laughs> uh, so you're going to want to check that out and... If you sign up at any level, you can cancel or change it in any given month. You're not locked into anything. You can do monthly or yearly, whatever your preference is. So if you have something in the budget to kick in for this podcast, go do it, and we'll give you something cool in return. And that helps uh, keep the lights on and keep this podcast going. We're going to have a little commerce and exchange of goods and services going on, and we would love it if that's, you came to our Patreon, if it's in the budget. If it's in the budget. That's how it works. So head on over to patreon.com slash from superheroes. That's P A T R E O N dot com slash from superheroes and now let's ask the final question of what would you change diana what would you change my change uh i'm not going to do anything with the human stuff because it's kind of too broken to fix easily so no changes for the human stuff um what would make my heart hurt less so the biggest change i really need is there are other kongs in the hollow earth Ooh. oh my god he needs a family so like i don't know how many but there's a couple and he finds them in the hollow earth and then I think maybe he's the oldest, actually, because they give him a little bit of gray. I'm going to make him the oldest Kong. And so he's, like, so happy. And then Godzilla shoots down, and he's so mad. Because he's like, my family. You can't shoot at my family. And that's why he goes up to fight. Um, and then uh, I don't know why it would work or how it would happen. I'd have to work out the beats better. But I want his entire family to also come up from the hole and help fight. And then they all go back into the hollow earth together. Ah. I want them to immediately want to help Kong. I want him to want to protect them. I want, a, I want this to be the Kong movie about Kong finding a family and protecting them and them trust. Maybe they don't trust him when he shows up. And then when he goes to protect them by coming up, they're like, oh, we trust you now. You protected us from Godzilla. Something like that. Or maybe the apes are only like half his size. I don't know. Something's going on. No matter what, Kong gets a family at the end of this movie. Because I don't like him. Like I like that he's in a place where he can hunt and he's the king and he's got food now and he's going to be safe. But he still doesn't have a family. Mm. You can't just be a lone ape for your whole existence. That's still sad. Mm. Especially if he is going to live to be thousands of years old, like you said. And I don't know why I don't care if Godzilla has that happen to him. Because I feel like Godzilla just sleeps every time he leaves. But Kong's awake and right. he's hunting and he's bathing and he's being sad. He deserves a family. I agree with you on, on the Godzilla thing. We talked a little bit about it off podcast that it's less sad for Godzilla to be alone because Godzilla is meant to symbolize nature mm. and the earth. Like it, Godzilla symbolizes an entity as much as the earth is singular. The universe is singular. Godzilla is an entity, whereas Kong is a living creature, and you root for that uh, for a living creature to find family. Yeah, he has human emotions. Kong, Godzilla is pretty much always just a stoic badass who you mm. genuinely don't think needs anybody, yeah. and Kong is like, I am lonely, and I feel pain, and I'm sad. Yeah. And he deserves a family at the end. That's my big change. Kong gets a family. Mm. Mm -hmm. Andrew, what would you change? Uh, I, I, I would want to change mainly Mechagodzilla. So oh, first okay. of all, I, I love your change. I think that's fantastic. He should end up with a family. Yeah. The Mecha Godzilla, as great as it is to be a reveal at the end, and I think for big fans of like Godzilla and kaiju movies, Mecha Godzilla is a big deal and is a fun like final like holy shit, Mecha Godzilla's here. Get it in earlier. Hmm. If this was like we start the movie with a Kong Godzilla fight, if this was evil corporation that is greedy, which is what it is. And it makes no sense that at the end of the movie, this evil corporation that's greedy make Mecha Godzilla using parts from uh, 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 Monster uh, Zero. Ghidorah. Okay. Uh, yeah, which, same thing, Monster Zero. And then evil robot that they're going to use to kill Godzilla, they lose control of it, and it remains evil robot trying to kill Godzilla. It has a null effect on the plot. It doesn't change its goals in any way. It's exactly the same thing as it was previously. What I want is evil corporate CEO trying to 
make money, as is a classic plot line in a like man versus nature, corporate greed versus back to nature type of a storyline, that this corporation wants the world to want Mecha Godzilla and is trying to set up a fight between Godzilla and Kong so it can come in and save the day and be the hero. Ah. I don't understand why that isn't, it's, it seems so obvious and simple and maybe trite because it's been done before, but this type of like, can we get these two to fight each other and then we'll look like the hero and then we'll make money. Because as it is right now, it's a big evil CEO and a corp evil corporation and their goal doesn't seem to be to make money. No, their goal seems to be kill Godzilla. Yeah, and they don't accomplish that, and they don't make money, and they die and end up not even having an implication on the fight, or the they lose control of everything. So yeah, I would really like maybe the second act is a fight where Mecha Godzilla takes down both Godzilla and King Kong, Ooh. and then the, and then the third act is them having to come back and fight together. Ah, and, yeah. So it's a like. Kong, the, the act structure would be like Kong versus Godzilla in the first act, Kong versus Godzilla interrupted and defeated by Mecha Godzilla in the second act. Then that's the darkest night. Then in the third act, Kong and Godzilla team, team up. up to mm. fight Mecha Godzilla. Whereas right now it's a lot compressed into one final fight sequence. When if we're going on a character journey with Kong, we should have the character journey of like, I fight Godzilla, maybe it was a draw. I fight and we both lost together. Can we get over our differences and win together? Mm. That's a character's journey. And Kong is the lead character of this movie. So I want Mecha Godzilla in earlier as just an evil CEO thing to be like, let's prove the heroes wrong. And then the world will need us and we make money. And then the heroes have to team up. I like this a lot. I, th I also like that it puts more Godzilla in because as much as Kong is the lead, it feels like Godzilla is like the Superman of Justice League in this. He's barely in it. Yeah. So like a fight just with Mecha Godzilla and Godzilla kind of before the end would be very interesting. A little bit more Godzilla action going on. Yeah, that makes tons of sense. You're right. They have no goal other than kill Godzilla, but there's no profit. Yeah. They just want to be like, we hate Godzilla, but he's great. Not only is there no profit, they have just sank a ton of money and resources. So much money. For literally nothing. They made tubes. They made their own tubes under the earth to like send stuff. They've made a giant building sized mech. Money and resources are free, apparently. And somehow the plot to this is still evil, greedy CEO. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't quite track. I get you. Yeah. yeah. I agree. Lovely. So yeah, great change. Early, early Mecha Godzilla. They team up to fight, and then Kong gets his family at the end. I love this. No, because the best part of this movie is the fights, and I think you've added like two more that way. Mm -hmm. Great, yeah. excellent stuff. More fights, more fights. Hmm. Wonderful. Oh, if they didn't get to the Hollow Earth until the end, and then you could he just like finds a family. You could see a silhouette of apes on the diff on oh, the distance. Shit on your left, Cap. Yeah. That's <laughs> that would be it. Yeah, mm. I like combining our changes. No, I like this a lot. Yeah. Mm. Apes at the end, more Mecca. It's Kong's movie. All right, well, that's going to be it for this week for Godzilla vs. Kong. Uh, next week on the podcast, we are going to be talking about Invincible. Invincible, we're very excited. We love the Stephen new, Yun. So. Yeah, the new Amazon Prime is where it is. Yeah, Amazon Believe Prime, Prime. Uh, original series. Invincible, we're going to be talking about episodes one, two, four. I think four or five. We have to check the release. It's so weird when they're like, here's three and here's one and here's two maybe. It's sporadic and unpredictable online release. We'll be covering at least three episodes, probably four. Maybe, maybe five. five. Question mark. What a fun time. But we'll be talking about Invincible next week. In the meantime, if you want to get a hold of us, you can reach me on Twitter at Ivamy, I-V-I-M-E-Y. You can reach me at Words of Diana. And you can reach both of us at From Superheroes. And we'll see you all next week. Bye. Thank you.